welcome to episode 623 of Aussie Tech Heads. How are you doing this week? Uh, I'm your host, Glenn, and we'll be joined in a minute by Joe for this week's episode. We'll say good day to him in a second. But before that, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. If you've got some hosting requirements, you might be at a place where, you know, you, you might have a little issue, you try and ring them, you can't get onto them. Well, maybe you should think about coming over to us, athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, also, we are brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. If you're interested in starting a company, you might be, I don't know, wanting to move from a, a business type setup or even a sole trader. Things are going gangbusters for you and you want to uh, yeah start a company register a company with ASIC we can do that at startnewcompany.com.au uh, you'll get the the ASIC registration certificate for your company to put into a uh, little uh, I don't know a little uh, frame and you can stick that up in the you know the front of your business or whatever and you also get all the documentation the the constitution shareholders agreements minutes of meetings directors not guarantees but directors minutes of meetings whatever that's all there it all comes to you from startnewcompany.com.au and one of these days facebook you will be able to call into us live we're just waiting for jordan to get back uh he's away again this week but soon enough he'll be back and we'll be doing we'll be we can't do it just with the two of us because uh, it's we need three to, to kick it off with anyway. But anyway, that's coming. Call in live is coming soon. Uh, on tonight's show, we've got things like update your Google Chrome, uh, the Melbourne Council and the Apple Store, the Microsoft Band. Is that still going on? I don't think so. But anyway, there's plenty of those stories and more. And also, you can hear all of those stories again if you want to repeat the show or if you just want to listen to other tech shows from Australia on the Aussie Tech Radio. Uh, Now, you can find out how to listen to that at aussietechradio.com. You can listen to it straight off the browser or download TuneIn Radio app on whatever you are on, your Windows 10, your iPhone, your Android, whatever, and search for Aussie Tech Radio. You can find our show on Spotify just by searching Aussie Tech Heads. So uh, you can do that as well. And uh, Facebook. And if you're watching on Facebook, you know where to go, but it's at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. And if there's something you want us to talk about, why not bung it up there uh, before the show, preferably a day or so, so we have a look at it and, you know, we might have to read up on it or something. Might have to do some research. But anyway, chuck it up there. YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. And uh, we, yeah, maybe on the Twitter, but I don't really get into all that sort of stuff too much. But we are there. Uh, I'm not, I think the phone goes off if someone sends me something. So you can try that. But it's a bit of a cesspool, the old Twitter. So I tend to keep away from it. All right. So in saying all that, welcome to the show and welcome, Joe. How you doing? I'm good, Glenn. How are you? Yes, not too bad, thanks. Uh, what have you been up to this week? Anything exciting? Uh, no, not really when it comes to the tech world. I've been doing a bit of work around the home, but as far as the tech world, it's been pretty um, pretty dead, hasn't it? Um, yeah, not not too many stories around this week. It's uh, yeah, quite lame. But uh, we'll, we'll, you know, just I think the lamest story was Trump calling Tim Cook Tim Apple. <laughs> yeah, that's read right. About. Yeah, I read that. I mean... Um, yeah. I look. No. I, I went and looked at the footage, and yeah, you know, the guy's got so much going on in his brain, and he's he's talking about Apple creating jobs and all this. It, it wasn't a it wasn't a flat out look straight in the eye and go, "Hey, go on, Tim Apple." It was, yeah, you know, it was. I don't know anything to pick on him. I think. Oh, he may have even said it on purpose just to get the media talking. <laughs> he might have too. He is pretty good at that sort of stuff. He's good at stirring them up. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, what else I going to ask you about? Uh, I was going to ask you about something. How's your computer going? It's going really good at the moment. Um, it's not Mr. Beat. Ever since I changed that hard drive, it's right. been going really good. That's good. And so you're all up to date. Have you backed everything up yet? Have you finished that? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, everything's backed up. Um, everything's the way it was back the way it was before. I mean, I've, I've got a few programs um, not installed, mm. but I'll get them as I need them. Oh, it's always the way, isn't it? Like when you uh, reformat your computer and start from scratch again, there's a lot to do. Like, you know, oh, I do yeah, it. Of course, you've got to go <clears throat> looking for all your numbers, like your, yeah. your post- passwords and, and, you know, your serial numbers and, you know, mm. your, your antivirus and mm. all those sort of things. Resubscribe, but, um, you know, all those different things. I mean, one thing that's made it easier for me is using the Google Chrome. Yep. That sort of has keeps all your bookmarks and everything in place. So that's all good. Yeah, I've got to do a bit of a tidy up with my bookmarks. They're a bit of a mess. They're just all 
they're flung in there <laughs> anywhere. I do have to clean that up. I did have a little issue with the passwords with Google Chrome because uh, I was running the last pass as well. Uh, they sort of fought each other, you know, to see who could be first into the password field. And um, things, I, I noticed a limitation with Google Chrome and the passwords was that, so you had uh, passwords for, you know, say the root directory of a site uh, and then the subdirectory of a site. Say, for example, um, I don't know, maybe, what's a good example? How can I think of an example of that? So maybe, uh, okay, so, say I've got two WordPress installs, you know, on aussietechheads.com.au. The first one is the, the landing page install, right? And then under it, with the where the podcast is, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. So there's another install which has its own username password. So I've got two username passwords here. So, but what I was finding with Chrome is it wasn't wasn't detecting that it was actually a password for the subdirectory. It wouldn't go that far. It would just keep filling with the uh, you know with the the root directory password for that for that oh, WordPress. Right, okay. It wasn't, yeah. and you couldn't say to it, look, there is there's a different password for slash podcast, and there's a different password just for the root directory or slash something else. It couldn't do it. It just went just the root the top level directory so anyway I, I finally i had the you know got the shits with it so i turned it off in the chrome settings turned all the passwords off and then uh, just relied on LastPass. and i'll tell you my life's been a little bit easier since then so it's been pretty good um i actually use both i actually use the google one and i use the last pass as well in together i mean when when you put a new password in and it asks you do you want to save it normally google comes up first and asks you mm. Um, and I say, yep, go ahead. And then um, I also save it in LastPass as well when it pops up. Because sometimes one will pop up and, and the other one doesn't. Um, you know, you, you yeah. never know. In my way of thinking is you never know when you're going to need it. You might be at somebody else's place with somebody else's computer and you think, oh, I, I can't remember the password. But if you're logged into your account um, yeah. and, and you can actually um, – it'll remember the password for you if you if you mm. do Google Chrome. Yeah, oh yeah, look it does work like that, but I just found the conflicting with the the two with it not not um pushing like if you if you had the same scenario with the with different passwords for different levels of a domain that you were logging into for whatever reason, uh then it, yeah, you'd have the same problem. It wouldn't know it kept Yeah, the, I I haven't come across that because I don't use it like that. Yeah, so, but anyway, so I got rid of the part, I turned the passwords off and yeah, it's all right. You can download LastPass onto something else as well, onto another device and uh, it will um, uh, remember them. I think the dog just came in. Yeah, I just saw the, something, the, the door open. <laughs> yes. like, it was like a ghost opened the door. Yeah, the little dog comes in and sees just sitting at me at the uh, feet. Now, um, well, I've got a little Chrome story in a second, but look, you might be wondering for those on the video why I'm wearing a hat. That's because I need a haircut. Okay, so there's nothing uh, untoward about oh, there that. Oh, it goes. It's all opened again. Oh, that's just going to stay open now. She doesn't know how to close it. Close it after herself. There's a one way, one way trick. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So that was the part of the password saga. And and what happened though was, can you believe that when I did turn the passwords off, that I hadn't saved my router password into the last pass. It was only saved in Google Chrome because so I went to log into the router. I just had no idea, and I said I tried every password that I normally use and could not log into that router. I had to reset it. I, oh wow! After days, Actually, I had to reset it. I, I I go one step further and I use a Android app. Um, can't think off the top of the head now what it's called, but even though it's got it in LastPass, I manually insert every password and username in this other app. Which backs it up to the cloud anyway. Right, right. Yeah, because um, I, I, I do that as well. Because talking about like uh, the software and that and the keys and everything. Look, I, I've p persisted and sat down, watched a couple of videos, and persisted with uh, OneNote, and I don't mind it. I quite like it now. I can. Uh, there's a little web clipper that you can use where you just, if you're on a page and you want to save that as a note, you just click the button and just saves it into OneNote. Choose what book, what notebook you want to save it. It's just a bit like Evernote. I think I spoke about it. Yeah, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I've, uh, you know, before I re reformat a person's machine, you know, I'll just take a couple of photos of the you know, the control panel program and features. So I know what was on there. And then not that I really sit there all day reinstalling it, but at least I give them a copy of the photo and they can go back and go, oh, yeah, okay, I'll go from A to Z and install all the software that they had. 
Yeah, it's a big job though, uh, reinstalling stuff. It's a massive job. But I was, yeah, with you know, a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about Trillio. Did you end up trying that? Yes, and I use it. Yes, I like it as well. Yes, yeah, I actually ended up use, uh, trying it as well after you talked about it. Mm. Thought, What's all this Trillio thing about? And I downloaded it and started using it, and I got it on every device that I have now. It's pretty good. Yeah, it lays it out. That's exactly what I was looking for. It was like a bit of a tattoo list. Um, I don't know, in the in the form of a, just post-it notes, but in some sort of order. And uh, I was looking for a list where I could organize myself into like, uh, say, uh, jobs for tomorrow. I've got like must-dos, medium priority, low priority. And then yeah, you can organise yourself better because, you know, you, you get in here, you start your work for the day or whatever, and you don't necessarily think about everything that you need to do uh, unless something will remind you, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, I have to do that. Uh, but, yeah, the Trello's pretty good. I think that, yeah, you said you get apps. I think you get plugins as well for Outlook and all that sort of stuff. So you can... That's uh, right, yeah. yeah. I use the calendar plugin for the... Um for the for the Google that works good too. Yes, yes, and I think you can get one what they call power ups for the free version, and then I think yes that calendar plugin was a power up, and I think I did have the cal- the calendar plugin, but I went over and got a checklist plugin, uh, which worked all right. So I can make up a checklist of I don't know maybe the first things I need to do every day, and I can just go tick 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 tick, and away we go. It's pretty good. I like it. Uh, all right. Well, enough about all that. Let's get into some stories. And look, I do have a Google Chrome story. Uh, there's a, a thing out saying update your Google Chrome right now. So that apparently there's a security flaw in Chrome, which and apparently Chrome was under attack last week. Uh, although Google's most recent Chrome update automatically fixed the problem in the browser, it's important that you double check that you're running the newest version. Are you ready? It is 72.0.3626.121. So 72 make, will do. Well, I don't know. There's probably a few after. <laughs> after 72 will do. Just go to the, uh, the, the uh, whatever it is, you know, the, the update. Now, how do you get there? You go to uh, open your browser in Chrome, go to the little dots at the right, go down to about. Uh, you'll find help. So slide down to help. And then I think once you click in the help, you'll get, It'll tell you if it's up to date or not, but you just make sure that's the version. And if it is, you're right, apparently. But yeah, so um, yeah, so look, I've been toying with the idea of getting rid of, you know, going to another browser. I saw I, when I was, you know, installing a PC the other day, I saw that Edge was, you know, in, when you load up the Windows, Edge comes up and says how good it is. Reckons it was just the fastest of the three. Firefox and Chrome and itself, but um, I've noticed that Internet Explorer is really starting to be a pig. I don't know if that's just just how it is that they don't develop it any further, but it's uh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that they don't uh, they don't look look at it anymore now. They're, yeah. they're trying to get you off it. Yeah, because like I open it up and then it just sits there for a couple of seconds before it even let you move the window around. You know, so um, because the the good thing with what I do is with the different browsers is like I'll have I've got the, all four of them actually I can see all four of them down there on my taskbar, but like you know sometimes you might want to log into different Google accounts or you might want to log in say uh, uh the if you got an Oz key with the ATO it might be you know attached to Firefox, uh and then I'll, I'll do something else in another browser <laughs> just to keep things simple. But yeah, I use them all, using them all. Um, yes, so we did, yeah, did the Chrome, so make sure you update that, make sure you update all browsers, actually, and, uh, all right, uh, Joe, well, what have you found this week that you thought was exciting? I was looking at, um, the Verge website, it's always uh, got interesting features and things there, and they were saying there that the Galaxy S10 and the LG G8 phone, that's the new ones that are coming out, the latest ones, hmm are going to get some sort of spam fighting call verification system installed on it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah so this work. is actually something from T-Mobile, which is an American service provider. Uh, they announced today that it is expanding its robo call fighting, call verified feature. Right. Uh, to five new phones, the Galaxy S10, the S10 Plus, along with the forthcoming uh, LG G8 ThinQ. Which is not a bad phone. I actually like that one. Yes. Um, they also um, currently on the Note Nine, the Galaxy S Nine, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they've got this um, feature which uh, displays a message 
that an incoming call is coming through and it's coming from a verified person. So it actually oh. verifies the person that's displaying the number on the screen is actually the person that it's coming from. I wonder how it does that though. Like, is well, there some big? It, it uses this thing called um, Stir and Shaken. Right. Um, Stir, which stands for Secure Telephone Identity uh, Revisited um, System, and the Shaken, which is Signature Based Handling and Asserted Information. Wow. Using KENS, whatever that is. Right. Apparently it's a method that uh, uses a certificate um, that's similar to how browsers confirm that a website is for real. Right, right. So I wonder so, how. Yeah, I wonder how. Like, cause yeah, how can it? Unless it's got a phone book behind it, like how's it going to know the calls coming from you? Or do you know what I mean? That's a. I, I'm not sure. Um, apparently, it says that the caller uh, is ver. Um, yeah, the call verifying system is different to what um, to what we currently know of, which is the name and the number ID that you normally get up on your phone. It works right. differently to that. Because I know sometimes, like I'll get a, a phone call on my just little, my little Charmy, and uh, it'll come up and go possible spam call, and it's from a number like it's probably never rang me before. So I think look, I wonder how this, does this is probably something similar to that. Mm. So, you, like, you wonder how does it sort of how is it trying to predict that it's a rubbish call? Like, uh, do, maybe it's got some sort of complaint database that it has. It probably, it probably does. It probably checks some sort of a database on the net um, for people who get spam calls, mm. um, and then um, it, it notifies you that it's possible that it could be. I mean, this is something new that they're, they're doing over there. It's nothing, you know, they're saying here that it's not a perfect solution to monitor spam calls. Right. But at least it's something. It's like something to tell you that the call you're getting from is actually, you know, the person that's coming through. Yes, but but then I guess, oh, geez, you'd have to you'd have to trust it, wouldn't you, a fair bit? Because you're not going to just you know, reject the call. It might be a legitimate call if you're running a business i guess you've got to go well you know it could be a legitimate call if you don't know the number well that's right i mean at, at the moment this this is um mostly for incoming calls coming from a verified person it doesn't it's not for um voice over um not for voice over ip um internet spammers right yeah right, well, so that's where they're trying to cut out yeah because i guess a lot of the all well, you probably think the majority of the spammers would be over the voice over IP with the Skypes and everything? I mean, over the last last week or two, I mean, I don't know how you, but I've been getting a lot of phone calls from, and they're all recorded messages. You know, you can tell that right. as soon as you pick up the phone, there's like a recording. And this is the op, uh, this is the um, website uh, trying to contact you because we believe that your system has been <laughs> compromised and blah, 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 blah. Is this coming through to your mobile phone? Or to your home phone, landline? It's coming through to the landline phone, but it's also coming through to the mobile every now and then. Right. Because I don't really get those type of things. I get the the worst or the most typical type of calls I get is like, um, you know, Hung Chung from Ding Dong who wants to boost up my SEO on my website. You know, that's that's the most of them that I get. And they say they're calling oh, from... We, we get all sorts over here. When we get people from the political parties now trying to, you know advertise via phone calls to us via mm. the local landline that's what they the robo calls is that what they they call them the robo Those calls things, yeah mm. and this is and this is what i'm saying this this particular system here that the that t-mobile is actually working on um with these new phones is to prevent that sort of thing from coming through mm. yeah right well i think that's a good idea i think if you can uh yeah at least you know, if you can easily uh, hang up from a spam caller and just identify it as a spam caller, then you know it'll like Google probably goes into the database and goes, okay, well that number's no good. And, yeah, um, I mean, if, if people have reported the phone number as as being sus or being uh, a spam number, I mean, it's 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 more like you know how you get if you're using the Google Chrome browser and you go to a website and it says hmm. uh, this site is not safe, turn back or continue. Yes. Yeah. Something similar to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, anything like that's a good idea to cut down on these rubbish calls. But, um, but yeah. Um, Melbourne Council, remember they were, Apple wanted to build a, a uh, flagship store down in Melbourne's Federation Square. And apparently the Melbourne Council, yeah, was all for it, but now they've had a bit of a, a turnaround. Uh, it's, yeah, the, the reversal came after the City of Melbourne's future Melbourne committee 
resolved to oppose the project. Uh, so, but apparently that's not the end for, of it because the Heritage Victoria uh, has yet to vote and apparently they've got a bit of the final say. Uh, I think that's got something to do with they don't want to tear down or change the existing structure too much. Uh, so there's no, there's no more, not much more to sort of hear about that. It was just a bit of an update because I know we spoke about it before. Uh, Apple's already, Apple has all has also already redesigned the building in an effort to find a new design more acceptable. And look, I've got a link in the show notes at howsytechheads dot com dot au forward slash podcast. If if you got a one and a half hours just to waste, you can watch the Melbourne <laughs> Future Committee. Uh, deliberate for an hour and a half. So you can try and do that if you want to, but it's all there and see what they, see the people opposing it and see the people for it and, geez, it's pretty boring. <laughs> I don't know how people sit there through these council meetings. It's uh, probably, you know, when there's no yelling and shouting, there's pretty monotone, mundane, boring stuff. And anyway, they're getting paid well for it though, Joe, so I guess if I was getting a hundred grand a year to sit around... I probably would too. Yeah, I know. And that's and then when they retire they get that even into even when they're not working. Yeah, there was a bit of that this week, wasn't there? But uh I think when the was that Julie Bishop, she gets all the perks, but I don't know. She she started the st- started her run when it, all the perks were all in vogue. Um I think it's all been changed now, so there's no need to worry about people coming into parliament now, but the all the oldies that are getting out there under the old scheme. Yeah, we look we look after these people, don't we, Joe? We sure do. We work very hard to pay their retirement. <laughs> so yeah, there's all every time someone uh, high profile like that leaves, there's always a bit of a Yahoo about you know, uh, oh yeah, they're going to get three hundred thousand a year for doing nothing, in their own office, uh, you know, six hundred flights a year, you know, on the personal taxpayer. driver. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. It is a rort. It's a big fat rort, and uh, <laughs> but. I don't know. Those were the rules, I suppose, but at least they've uh, stopped them. Uh, all right, where are we off to now, Joe? I was reading today that they've got, um, because I bought myself a new um, fitness watch, uh, it's not a very expensive one. It's just a a, a cheaper version, um, mm-hmm. but it does all your, you know, your steps and does all your blood pressure and, and does all your, you know, beats per minute and all that sort of stuff. What brand um, is it? Uh, the the one I got it's called the A6 smartwatch. Let me see right, if you'll I can find get that up. there's a, a link in the show notes of the particular one that I got. Oh, I don't think you put your show notes over this week for me. I did. Yes. Oh, did you? Well, I'll yeah. have a look. I'll have a look. Okay, you keep going. I'll look for those. Okay, but um, I'll talk about this new Fitbits that watch that's come out. It's called the um, the Versa Light smartwatch. Yep. And it's it's one hundred and sixty dollars. I'm I'm guessing that's US. And it's the new Versa Lite, which is a stripped-down version of its um, current entry-level smartwatch. Um, it comes in a couple of colours, you know, purple and blue, and and, and others as well. Um, is that the fella? It's the name. It's not physically any smaller or thinner than the original Versa smartwatch. The light retains the same um, squarish type shape on right. the screen, and the same size bezels. It runs on uh, Fitbit OS. That's actually my watch, the one you got up on the screen now. And this right. is not the Fitbits one. So that's the one you got? Yeah, this is the one I got. And so it looks like an Apple Watch. Um, it does Does it look a bit like the Apple Watch. And I, I think the one you got up on the screen is, is the wrong link. Oh, but... It- yeah, that, okay, well, that doesn't matter. I'm still trying to find those other ones. <laughs> uh, the one I've got up uh, on, on the show notes, it's, uh, it comes from Gear Best. Right. So is that, is that, are they over here or where are they? Where? Oh, that's, an, that's an online uh, shopping store, Gear Best. Right, right. Just at the bottom of those uh, show notes, you'll see the link there. Oh, I'm just uh, looking. At went... the bottom of the Fitbit's new 160 versus light smartwatch on the bottom of those notes. Yep. Yeah. Well, we keep. Can you tell us more about? It? Tell us how it feels, Joe. I'll, I'll find them. Don't you worry. Anyway, yeah. I'm I'm talking about the the Fitbits at the moment. While well, you look at for that, so um, the Fitbits um still works on the uh, Fitbits operating system, and it offers all the usual functions, which is the sleep and exercising, 
Um, it doesn't, however, have uh, Wi-Fi or any NFC. Right. Uh, it doesn't play any music. Um, it doesn't do swimming laps or any floor climbs and stuff like that. Uh, because there's no music playing, it also doesn't have any buttons on the right-hand side, like the original Versa watch. Mm. So, did, um, yeah, did you say that it... Uh... Oh, I found your show notes. Sorry. <laughs> you can't, I'm, I can't talk and, and copy and paste at the same time. Um, so that watch... Yeah, so you said it does blood pressure, but that's not... It does, yeah. The watch that um, that uh, I've got, it does good blood pressure and uh, counts the beats, you know, heartbeats and, and all that sort of stuff. Right. Okay. So I've got here, give developer tools. Here it is. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Copy link. Let's have a look, Joe. What do what you got going here? Get rid of that. Here we go. 160 that's, bucks. That's the watch I'm talking about. That's for 160 dollars. That's not the one that I've actually got. That's the Fitbit's version. Right. 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 Which is um, the the cut down version of the original one. The original ones around about 300 dollars or so. Right. Okay. It's uh, the cut down version. So okay. So who's putting this out? So they are they got their own brand, but they're using yeah, the Fitbit. Yeah, this is Fitbit's. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, that looks all right, doesn't it? And and so you can just join in with other Fitbit users and all that sort of stuff? That's right. It does. Oh, not this particular model here. This one here is just um, very basic. does all the basics. It's taken all the Wi-Fi and everything off it. It doesn't have any GPS, this particular watch. Right. Uh, but for someone who just wants to track their their uh their heart uh, their heartbeat and their um you know steps and mm. their how many calories and stuff that they're losing, it's perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks all right. And does it tell you who's ringing on your phone and all that sort of stuff? It does give you some notifications, but it's not full notifications like the other watch. Right. Yeah, because I've got a Fitbit, uh, what is it, a HR? Is that one of those things? Just yeah, to... well, this one's not like that. That one's more like the original big screen one that you mm. have. Yeah. Because I know... Only half the price. So I know someone, and this, you know... You know not don't keep up with these fit devices, but uh, one of someone I know, he's got one of these devices and counts his calories and everything like it. He, you know, he goes for a run and it'll say to him, or you've already used, you've uh, done twenty percent of your calories that you need to do today, you know, by just running around the block or something. They're pretty good. Yep. They're pretty good. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you if you look at this um, at at the, at the bottom of those show notes that are for the the Fitbit's watch, you'll see that there's another link there. Um, I've got Scott there. I've got myself another uh, smartwatch this week. Nothing yep. flash. Yeah. That's that's the one that I actually got. Right. Let's have a look here. Oh, yeah, that thing. The one that you got up on the screen now. That's 20 the one bucks. I've got. 20 bucks. That's uh, 20 bucks. <laughs> um, and I'm telling you what, I've had it for a couple of days and I'm impressed. And it, it does everything that you want it to do. Right. Apart from, you know, you know making calls, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does all your, your steps and it does all your blood pressure and it does all your, um, if you scroll down further on that page, it should give you a bit of uh, details on. Yeah. Um, yeah, the heart rate monitor function, give you real time feedback. Yep. Uh, display the time, date, steps, distance, calories. When you are sitting for a longer time than the preset duration, the watch will remind you to go and do something. Setting the alarm clock on the phone, the watch will remind you with vibration. Uh, yeah, master exercise and calories consumption anytime and anywhere. Are you curious about your sleep quality? Gee, it's got it's got a few things going on for twenty bucks. That's right. I mean, I've only been using it for a couple of days, and the app that comes with it is very good, very well laid out. Um, a lot of information. It, it splits it out in the hourly um, time frame, so you can see what's happening every hour. You can, um, so when I'm really impressed. Yeah, I'm more interested in the Gear Best site. So what else have they got? Is this? Oh, they've, got, they've got a lot of stuff there. I've, I've bought a few, quite a few things from Gear Best. So shipping 11 cents to Australia. Why bother? And so okay, so if I was to buy one today, ship between the seventh and oh yeah, and it takes 15 to 30 days. So it must be coming obviously coming from Hong Kong's or somewhere. Yeah, right. But yeah, twenty bucks. That's all right, Joe. 
That's good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's good. You know, I mean, I want to, I want to get the the real good one. But they're like three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars for a real good one. Mm. And uh, so I thought, you know what, I'll start off with this for the moment, have it on my arm, um, and have and see how it goes. If I feel that I'm, you know, I'm going to use it a lot or I get some sort of benefit, well then I'll buy a good one. It's got a good reviews too. Oh, except for this guy here, it me- it good. I got it, but not satisfied. It measures everything without my concern. Climbing, cycling, BP, etc. It affects charge, changes option without any touch or tapping. I don't know what it means. Can't even write English. So we'll disregard that one. But the yeah, rest no, of... You can't make everyone happy. But I'm, as no. like I said, I've been using it for a couple of days now, and, and I found it really good. I like it. Right. Oh, good. Uh, and what's that? Water resistance, waterproof. That's right. And it's got a five-day battery life as well. Mm, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Well, let's see if it's still going next week, Joe. If it is, I might buy one. <laughs> no worries. Well, I, I, I haven't taken it off since I've, since I've had it. I mean, sure, it's waterproof, right? Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I've taken it out when I've been in the shower. I'm not too, you know, yeah. trusty. That, oh, damn, it doesn't actually, it's not actually waterproof. You know what I mean? Like, well, well from, from Joe's new smartwatch to, well, not a smart, whatever you call them, but to Microsoft's band. Remember the Microsoft band? You thought it had yeah. died? You're right, yeah. it has. <laughs> it's finally being put to rest three years after production ceased. Uh, Microsoft announced that it would end support for its two wearable devices this May 31st when it just in completely shuts down the Microsoft Health dashboard along with the associated applications and services. So anyone that still owns a Microsoft band, uh, and I'll show you a picture of the bands, that's what they look like if everyone... People want to know what they look. Like. I thought they look really nice, actually. Oh, I think they're pretty cool and trendy. But yeah, they, they, they looked alright. They probably did a good job too. Yeah, but you know, obviously, um, they they just came late to the market. They they didn't they didn't they were too late. Uh, and it's not their core product, is it? It's the um, you know, it's not what they're known for. They're known for Windows and Office. So anyway, so yeah, that, they're shutting all the cloud stuff down. Anyone that still owns the band, Microsoft Band, can use it after the 31st of May, but functionality is limited. Uh, and But the more important thing is customers with a Band 1 device uh, can get a refund of $79.99 and a Band 2 uses $175 $175 from Microsoft. They'll send out refund instructions to eligible customers. Now, the Microsoft will also delete all data stored in the health dashboard as of 31st of May, but you can export it. Customers can also import their band data to another service or wearable device. So if you've got one of those, um, pull your finger out and start looking and see if you, A, if you can get a refund, and uh, B, how to export the data if you need to. Well, that's all right. That's good of Microsoft to do that. I mean, they're going above and beyond to try and you know, help their their customers with what they uh, they got there. Mm. Yeah, I think that there's with everything. I think there's fine print in the you know if you receive a refund, it was something like you have to have logged in, uh, you know, within the last six months or something to the cloud thing. So um, if you've got one of those bands, log in straight away, and you know you might be eligible. But I don't know if they. Yeah, look, I think they they were sold over here, weren't they? But they just didn't take off. They were just yeah, hopeless. I, I don't actually remember seeing them in a shop, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did see them, but uh, I think I had my Fitbit by then. Again, as I said, late to the market. But they look, you know, look, they look really. I, I like the design. I like the look of them. <clears throat> um, because they had a long horizontal screen on them rather than the, you know, a, a square screen or a Fitbit screen that was. Uh, yeah, hor- uh, vertical, and you know, because it was a horizontal screen. Well, to me. The, the screen, the numbers, the, the digits and the letters on the screen were bigger, were able to be bigger. And, which and you know, that's one of the reasons why I don't get a watch is because, well, you can't see it. So, yeah, there you go. All right, well, that's us give everyone a, a watch wrap-up this week. <laughs> it's gone watch crazy. Um, all right, what else, Joe? Well, um, reading on the TechCrunch, um, it says here that... Um, Google is now giving Android developers new tools to make money from users who won't pay for ad- for using their apps. Right. Okay. So it sounds like they're not happy with just, uh, you can use the app and you can maybe click on the ad by mistake. It mm. sounds like now they're trying to do something else to go and grab your money. <laughs> um, yes. It, it, what they're saying here is that it's, it, Google's today is introducing a new way for Android developers to generate 
revenue from their mobile applications. And no, it's not a subscription related. Instead, the company is launching a new monetization option for apps called rewarded products. Right. Um, this uh, new rewarded product will allow non-paying app users to contribute to an app's revenue stream by sacrificing their time, but not their money. Right. So what? So what? You've got to what? Do a survey or something? Uh, basically, what they're asking you to do is that you do a uh, you, you, you the the product will be. Um, uh, like a rewarded video you, you, where, optus, uh, where users can opt to watch a video um, in exchange for, say, some game currency or some virtual goods or for some sort of other benefit. Um, this feature may make some developers happy, but uh, the users might not be so happy about that sort of thing. I was just reading the first... Uh... There's some comment under the story. The first one was going, yeah, this guy loves it. You know, he reckons he got $50 an hour, blah, blah, blah. And the next one told him where he could go. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing that's going to happen, you know. Like, it's it's getting to a point now where, you know, you can't get anything free. I mean, and, and in a way, I get it. I mean, you know, if you're an app developer, you could spend hours and hours and hours and days and weeks to, to develop an app For sure. under the hope that people are going to subscribe to to the to the system of the app and and perhaps even use you know some uh, some buying some stuff that you know, extras and stuff but that a lot of people they don't do that um, mm. you know, even even to get rid of the ads it's a one time fee and then what happens after that you know you get to use the app for a year or two or three mm. and um, there's no money coming in from there but you've got to keep updating it you've got to keep working on it so in a way I sort of understand where they're coming from with it but geez. Is everything going to be user pay when online? Well, what it, what are you saying? Is everything going to be user pays? Yeah, I mean everything's going to get that way. Yeah. Whereas the internet was supposed to be this you you know, f- free resources online. Um, well, I guess it's, it's going to become the complete opposite now. Well, I guess like there are free resources out there, but you can't. But like you wouldn't you wouldn't want to spend three weeks doing as you said before three weeks building something, and just to give it away. Like there has to be some sort of way of. You know, like maybe yeah, I understand. Yeah, you're right. One hundred percent. I understand where, where you're coming from with that. And but the, it seems to me that you're getting bombarded from left and right. And, mm. You know, everyone's trying to get. I think. Money. Look, I, I've just had an idea. I think what should happen is that they they should have little co-ops or something. You know, so it's not just the Play Store, just a big a big well of a, a billion little games and apps. Like, why not have like a some sort of like say Spotify experience? You know, where so you get some you get some tailored games, or you, you'll have a selection of games, and for ten bucks a month, you can play whatever you like within those games and maybe you know like the music maybe the developer will get one cent for every game played or half a cent for every game played whatever the whatever metric will work out for both parties but maybe something like that might work you know just something yeah, that yeah yeah I, I i think so but, um because I, I know that it's, you know, like, well, I'll download the game and I'll play the free version and there's no, and this is the thing, like, you know, in the old days, you know, you had your Atari or your whatevers, the, and we still do the Xboxes and the game's like $80, but when you're on your phone, you bitch about paying two, you know? That's right, yeah. <laughs> so it is pretty yeah. crazy when you think about it, but... Yeah, um, I know. But yes, but you do because I don't. I'll play a game and just you, then just suck out the free version. <laughs> I'll be going on the paying two bucks where it gets stuff. I, I remember. Move on. I remember going back a few years. I can't remember what the name of the app is called now. But I I bought this um, app and it was like you're a salesperson. You sell cars, right? So you're sort of like a, a a real life type salesperson where you actually you go into the database of this particular app and you go out and you find cars. You, you you know you buy it off people mm. um, and then you sell the you sell it again you know and and you might find that some of them have got bits and pieces where oh uh, this car's got a, a faulty you know, transmission so you've got to pay to get it fixed and mm. and, and this it's like a real life um, you know car sales yard yeah yeah right because so I, that was really fun for a while until I started <laughs> thinking you know okay well I need to know a bit more about these cars because I was getting ripped off mm. so I, I paid in and I um I paid the extra, you know, a few dollars to buy the next level up, and then I paid for the next to get the next level up, and it, it just seemed like you were paying money for, 
mm. little benefit, you know what I mean? So there's once after a while, I, I sort of opted out of that, didn't play it anymore because it was just not fun anymore. Yeah, I think like uh, like I you know as you go around the internet, you know like we were talking about the Trello before, and you know you come across this and that and everything else, but see all these things they're ten fifteen dollars a month, you know, and like you just can't go and go oh yeah i like that subscriber like that subscriber like that subscribe because before you know it you'll be up to 100 bucks a month you know and um you just can't sustain that sort of thing so like i'd like to see this is just me in my little perfect world <laughs> I'd, well perfect world i'd like to see more for free but in a, in a less than perfect world why not say okay um you know we everyone's got to, everyone's got to make money so okay say you trello okay it'll be 15 dollars a month okay normal price for the first 12 you stick with us after then you'll go 10 bucks a month or well, then and in the third year and forever more you're you're great we know we can rely on you, you we, we love you you use our product um we love each other let's go you know five bucks a month you know and then, and then you'll be able to afford to have a look around and and try different not say the same thing as try but different different uh, subscriptions that you might want to have a go at of something completely different that helps you out but yeah all these subscriptions they, and the, some the, some of them are 10 but they, I see they're starting to creep up to like 20 bucks a month for a lot of them it's just That's too right. much yep. it's too much yeah so don't know what the answer is there because sometimes like alternatively I will go to the phone and see if there is like a little two dollar version for the phone and mo- and sometimes there is there's there's a, there's a way around it you know so you don't have to do the the big PC version or whatever but uh, but yeah, all these subscriptions add up, so you got to be you got to be careful. Uh, all right, so you finished with that one, Joe? Yes, I am. Thanks, mate. All right, where what have I got coming here? It's been a bit of a bit of a slow week for stories, so I hope we picked out some interesting ones for you. Uh, here's one, not that you. Uh, it's just for your information, not that anyone probably really cares. But Office Works, uh, they've bought Geeks to you. So I'm pretty sure we all know what Officeworks is. geeks to you is a, a home business computer repair nationwide firm. Uh, if you've got a problem, you ring them up and, you know, you get a tech on site within a day uh, to give you a hand. So geeks to you provides hardware. Oh, I just said all that. Office, Officeworks Managing Director Sarah Hunter said that the acquisitions was part of the Office Supplies Retail Strategy to expand its offerings, better meet customer needs, and complement its, its existing products and services. Uh, in De- they've gone on a bit of a spending spree, old Officeworks. In December last year, uh, Officeworks started reselling NBN services through the uh, through its Accord with Officeworks branding, offering both personal and business plans. I won't have to look them up. I've got to find out about NBN. Uh, in 2016, they reached an agreement with managed services provider CSG to offer device as a service in 2016. So they're not sitting still. Officeworks, are, uh, uh, it looks like they're going along all right. But I've noticed, I don't know if you go to Officeworks much, Joe. Do you get down there much? I, I do, yes, I do. Now, is this just me or are things in Officeworks getting dearer as well? I, I went... Went there the other day to look for some sticky tape, and I went, "Holy geez, is that the price for it?" So I come home and uh, got it off uh, eBay from China. Yeah, stuff stuff like that, sticky tape, and things like that. I normally go to like two dollar shops. You know, what I mean, they're yeah. just like a couple of doors down. You know, when you're in the shopping center doing some shopping, mm. yeah. um, you know, go to places like that. I mean, I mean if you're desperate and you need it straight away, sure, and you're there, grab it. But you know, sticky tape and 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 you know just general stuff like that. You just grab it from you know two dollar shops. Yeah, I know. I, I can hear people saying now, but you know, you get it off eBay. It's coming from China. You got to support the Australian economy. Well, I think Officeworks probably buys it from China anyway. So just cutting out their profit. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I know. Support Australia. I think I, I don't know. That's sort of gone down by the wayside at the moment. I don't think there's that many people interested in buying from Australia. I think they're more worried about their bottom, you know, their pocket. There is, but then again, I don't, I don't think enough things are identified as being uh, made in Australia. Like if look, uh, if there was sticky tape on the shelf, and one was Australian made and one wasn't, uh, well, as long as it wasn't ten bucks dearer, I'd probably buy the Australian. I, I'd give the Australian one within reason an extra ten percent, twenty percent. I think yeah, I, I'd do that because I know it's is it is important to support you know the local the local guy like because I'm a local guy that gets out there and tries to you know earn a buck so yeah I, I get it I, I I would do it but um but sticky tape I don't think Office Works is 
is buying it from uh, Sydney. I'm pretty sure they'd be buying it from China as well. Uh, all right, what it was? What else, Joe? Any more from you this week? No, the last story I have for tonight is a um, uh, something about some foldable smartphones. Oh yes, um, for 2019, and apparently there's a, a bit of a write up here. Uh, Business Insider did some sort of research, and they're saying that uh, the year for um, the for this year is meant to be for foldable smartphones, mm. um, but. Um, the biggest uh, makers uh, like Samsung and Huawei, who have actually you know, already showed us their smartphone that it folds up. Um, but they're saying that it's probably a good idea to wait a, a year or two before you actually go and buy them. Um, no, I reckon too. Because uh, these new phone designs will soon be available. And it, it, it just, just because they're, they're new and great and they're going to be like... Um, expensive when they first come out you know like i can't they're, talk, they're talking about the um the galaxy fold um mm. that they reckon that's going to be a us 1980 dollars for that particular phone holy jeez well yeah, i it's still a lot of money for a phone you can't tell me like where where is that picture i just saw that one there or that one there, you can't tell me that when it's it's opened up like a butterfly, as in this picture on the people on the video can see, uh, it, it's opened up like a butterfly, and the continual opening and closing, you can't tell me there's not going to be a crease down the bottom. Like, this, surely... this, is, this is another thing they're saying, that because it's so new, they don't know how it's actually... I mean, you know, in, in, in construction and manufacturing process, they've got those machines that open and close the phone, you know, thousands or even millions of mm. time to show that, you know, where it's going to fatigue or where it's going to break. If, you know, you've probably seen those little tests that they do. Yeah. But I, th- I think in the real life, that doesn't always happen that way, you know, so. Um, yeah. Look, I don't know. I don't, you know, like if, if it was, everything would crease. I can't. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I can't see why it won't crease. Then you have a big dirty crease down the middle of your phone. Yeah. Uh, who am yeah, I to so, so, wonder so the these thing things? Is, the thing is, maybe don't buy the first lot of phones that come out, you know, because, you know, if something happens to the phone, you say, let's say they come out this year um, and you've got one of these um, folding phones, who fixes them at the moment? <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? Who's going to fix it? Are you mm. going to send it back to Samsung or to Huawei? Mm. I, I, I doubt very much that, that have you know people around, you know your local shopping centres and places like that that fix them like like other phones do. Well, I suppose like that will come like if they take off, that's going to come. But yeah, but as you say, like first versions of anything, are pretty hard to swallow. I think to to spend it like well, nineteen hundred and eighty was that nineteen hundred and eighty? That's probably US as well. Yeah, it's US. Yeah, you know, like geez, what? So add another, um, what thirty percent onto that, so that'd be say three hundred, six hundred, just about. So that's yeah. going to be like say two and a half thousand dollars. And yeah, I mean, you look at the well, you get a um, the Samsung you know tab the tablet the the small one, mm. not the the ten inch, but what you call it the six inch or the seven inch one. Well, you'll get one of those for about what five six hundred bucks. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, sure, they're not foldable, but that's about the size your your phone will be when you when you get it open. And and why do you need a foldable phone? Is it just to get a bigger screen? At so the that's end pretty of the... much it. I mean, I, I must say, I, I love the idea of it. Um, I just, um, yeah, I, don't know, I just don't like the price. That's all. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty high. Well, there's that. There it is. There, like it's, it is pretty high. But you know, like it, it oh, like if it if it opens up and folds and and you can do it two million times, well, great. You know, I'll get one when the version two comes out. But um, that's but, right. And then what happens? Like I said, if if you drop that thing and you, then you got to get a screen, then what? How are you going to get a you could, yeah? You'd have to it's, set. It's, yes. it's a big, big, big deal. Then then the hinge, you know, say so you drop it a little bit on the corner, then the hinge goes out of whack. And mm. yeah, I don't know. So, so that's why they're saying wait until the year two thousand twenty or beyond that before you get one. Mm. I mean, sure, if you're an enthusiast and you really want to get it, then go for it. And but you're for rich people. Who, who just want to get it just to say, oh, I've got one of these fold phones. Probably not a good idea. No, no, that's right. I'll wait for a while for that, you know, before that happens. Um, all right, so that was your last one. And I think yeah, that's all I have for this week. Just I might be able to sneak one more in. 
Um, probably not as exciting as that one, Joe, but Microsoft uh, will start selling the Windows 7 add-on support from April. As you know, the Windows 7 is dead. It's gone. Um, they've labelled it the extended security updates. So this is a post-retirement support that will give enterprise customers more time to uh, get in and upgrade their Windows 7 environment. So from Windows uh, 7's 14th of January 2020, end of support, so that's now inside a year, uh, the extended security updates will provide security fixes for uncovered or reported vulnerabilities in the OS. So patches will be issued only for bugs rated critical and important. Uh, by the Microsoft, the two top ranking, blah, blah, blah. Now, the cost for these extended support updates, they will start at between 25 and 50 US per device, uh, but will double each year, ending at 100 to 200 per device for the third and final year. So uh, I guess it's just... Jeez, talk about pushing you into a system. Well, I guess, yeah. I think they, they've... Well, um, Apple does it. <laughs> Don't they? They just. They, yep, I they, guess so. Yep. They tell you when they're ready. When they Apple tell you when you're ready to upgrade. <laughs> so why not? Well, that's right. But I was also reading today as well that some Apple um, devices who still have to have pro, who still have battery problems. Apparently, Apple are still honouring the free battery replacement at some places. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I've still got a. I've still got my little 6S somewhere. Plus, they were in the other day. Oh. There we go. Yeah, I might, I might, I might have to see if I can get it. Yeah, but there you go. You still got they're to, still honouring it. There's some places they're still honouring it. Yeah, I think you still got to pay thirty bucks for it though. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll get into Blu-rays. I've got a Blu-ray player yet, but it's coming. But <laughs> I think I've been you know, PlayStation machine, haven't you? Yeah, the Xbox plays it, but it's not hooked up to the the, the TV I want to watch it on. But, um, but I quite enjoyed watching. I did watch a little bit on the Xbox TV. And uh, it was, uh, oh, geez, it was a great picture. I just thought, this is it, Blu-rays for me. But it looked, uh, a mate of mine was going to give me a, he had a Blu-ray uh, player, like an internal one for the computer. He had one kicking around his house and, oh, look, I was going to go and get it, but I don't know, he lives about 20 minutes away. I'm so lazy. <laughs> so I think I'll just go buy one at the shop. Uh, the Blu-ray picture is amazing. I mean, mm. my friend's um, got one uh, connected to his 55-inch uh, uh, Samsung TV. And the picture you get from that is amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to see if I can uh, uh, rip them and, you know, put them on the server and see if I still get the same quality. I should, as long as they're not too big. But they shouldn't be. They should be good. They should be good. No, there was a there was something I was reading um, this week about ripping uh, Blu-rays. If I can find it, I'll send it over to you. Apparently, you can still rip them, and it's an original... Um, it's an original format that the disc comes in. Right, right. And um, and even like if it's a 50 or a 60 gig file, it'll rip it at a 50 or 60 gig file. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and and you just pay it back on a hard drive. It's amazing, this program. I can't think now what it's called. Mm. Yeah, well, I think I've got a, a program called Make MKV, which apparently will do it. That, that's it. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, because I use it to, to the um, my DVDs. I bought I bought a DVD. Oh, Doctor Who, of course. I got that one because um, I haven't, didn't have that one on DVD. So I bought that through the week and I ripped it onto the computer. And yeah, that Make MKV, uh, that's, that is, Joe, it's a great little program. And, yeah, uh, and that, that also does Blu-rays now. Yes, I was reading because I read that too, yes. And uh, because the MKV I like is because it, it, uh, it, it when you rip it, it with DVDs at least, that's all I've done it for that so far. But it retains, it'll retain the subtitles, it re retains the chapters, uh, it just retains everything. Uh, you strip out the copyright, but um, you know you've bought it, so it doesn't matter. You, you're allowed to rip onto a different thing. That's right, yeah. Um, and the good <clears> thing about it is, is it plays it with um, most players will play it. Most players have got the, the right codex for it. Mm, yeah, so that's really good. So if you're looking at ripping that, uh, ripping uh, uh, your Blu-rays for your server, yeah, check that one out. Uh, all right, that'll uh, that'll finish us up, Joe. That's been good. Went, went fast this week, didn't it? Yeah. Um, how's anyone on the Facebook? 
Anyone that anyone asking questions? I haven't seen anybody leave any notes. I don't know whether my screen is refreshing properly or not, but I haven't seen anybody leave any notes. Well, if you are on watching Facebook, well, thank you. Uh, we'll see you again soon. And if you're on the iTunes or the YouTube, thank you also. And you'll be hearing from us or seeing us soon as well. So Jordan tells us he will be back next week. Uh, he's just been doing a couple of jobs and you know, you got to take the money before the tech heads, unfortunately. So well, that's what you got to do in life. So that's good. All right, Joe, uh, thank you. Good luck with soccer and whatever else you're getting up to. And, uh, we'll see you next week. No worries. Thanks, Dean. No worries. And we'll see you guys next week too. So have a good week. Can't wait for the footy. What, another one more week to go. One more barren weekend. And then the, the footy's back on. So good stuff. Go Sharkies. Come on. 2019 our year. All right. Mm -hmm. See you later. Bye-bye. Right. See you later.